Hi everybody, Richard Trowman's here again at Artificial Lawyer TV. Today we're doing another product walkthrough, and this time it's the fourth in a series of specials with Neota Logic. Uh, with us to tell us a bit more about document automation, which is another aspect of Neota Logic, is Dominique. Hi Dominique. Hi Richard. Good to have you. Um, I'm going to disappear now and let you take the audience through how doc automation works in Neota Logic, and uh, then I'll pop back at the end to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, so take it away. No problems. Sounds good. All right. So today's focus is on document automation uh, in the Neota Logic platform. So as you may have seen and heard in some of the other artificial lawyer Neota Spotlight videos, uh, the Neota platform has three core pillars of functionality, which you can see here. Expertise automation, document automation, and process automation with a data management layer underpinning all of them and all no code. So today we are talking about that document automation pillar, which probably needs less introduction than the others as document automation is exactly what it sounds like, taking your document templates and turning them into automated precedents. So how does document automation work in Neoda? Essentially, you're doing almost all of your work in a native Word environment. So the Neota toolbar is an add-in to Microsoft Word that enables you to mark up anything from the simple one-page document uh, with one field to highly complex agreements. Uh, and still within the Word environment, you can define and build a web application which is where your users go to answer questions and generate their own bespoke versions of your document template. So once you've finished marking up in Word, Neoda uh, automatically generates a complete working solution that you and your users can run in the browser. The last piece uh, that you do when you're building your document automa automation solution uh, is adding in any extras. So you can leverage the uh, other pillars of the platform to take your solution further by adding in uh, workflow logic. So uh, perhaps you want to send the document uh, to a counterparty for review or negotiation or e-signature, or perhaps you need an internal review and maybe you want to store that document in your own document management software. So uh, essentially you start with your document and automate that all in Word. And then if you want, you can leverage our other tools uh, to take your solution further. All right, so with that, uh, we'll dive into a bit of a demo of the tool. So I'll just open up this Word document that I've already prepared. Uh, and the way that this works is you start with your pre-existing document uh, or document template. So today I've got a master services agreement pre-prepared, but that's, could, that could be any document that you've got. So any agreement or any document that you want to uh, turn into a document automation solution. So we've got this document open now. And so we're still staying in the environment of Word. And what you do is you navigate over to this Neota Logic tab in uh, the toolbar. So once we click on this, uh, you can see a variety of different options that can help you turn your document into a web application. So two of the very key elements that we've got here are in terms of this process are this variable button and the condition button. And I'll just run through how those work. So for the variable, what you use this for is to fill in fields with information, which are usually pieces of information that you would be asking of your user. So for example, we have initiator company name highlighted here. So what we do is we just grab this and we go to the variable option and we hit new. And here is where we fill in a number of different and important pieces of information about our variable. And one of those pieces of information is the question text. So we define what we wanna ask our user to get the answer for this question. And we've got this pre-populated, but we'll just change that so that it makes a bit more uh, grammatical sense. So what is the initiator company name? Another field that we've got is the form. And this is essentially when you're in the web application, what form, what web page does that show up on? 
So we can create a form, let's call it initiator details. And now that question will automatically get added to that page. Another handy option here is this option, replace all occurrences of the selected text. And what that does is it means anywhere that you've used the same markups so that initiate a company name, uh, it will go through the document and replace uh, any time you've used that with the variable. So what that means is the user will end up getting asked initiate a company name once, and then it fills in the document in all of the places that you want it to. So I'll tick that and just hit okay. And you'll see that that's just replaced the field with our variable. And it's also done it down here because we had the same uh, text there. So there's a lot of customizations available when you're creating your variables, uh, like setting list options so that you can have your users choose between different responses or dates, numbers, uh, yes, no questions and so on. Uh, so for example, we could turn this company region question here into a list option for our user. So again, we go to variable, we hit new, and uh, what I'm gonna do is just copy these three options as our list options, so I'll just remove them there. And we just change the data type here to list. So now we've got a list and I'll just paste those options in, fix up formatting, and we've now got our list with three different options for the user to choose from. And we can place that question on the same form that we had the other question on. So those will actually appear together given that they're kind of related to the same thing. So we'll pick that and hit okay. And you'll see that turned into a variable as well. So that's really the crux of the process for automating all of your fields. You're just going one by one through that, hitting new variable, and then it replaces it and turns it into a field that will get automatically uh, populated. The second key option is condition. And this is where it gets deeper into the logic. So essentially you tie a condition around any piece of information in your document. Uh, so that might be a cause, a schedule, uh, a row in a table, or just a sentence or a word. And then you define when you want that text to show up. So down here, we've got this clause uh, data protection legislation, and we only want this clause to show if the user, uh, if the customer is based in EU. So conveniently, we just created that question that actually asks the user where they're based. And what I'm gonna do is use that question and turn it into a condition that wraps around this clause. And it means it will show the clause if the customer is in the EU and it will remove the clause if the customer is not in the EU. So the way that I do that is I use this second option here, we've got condition, click that, and again, clicking new, and I'll give that a name uh, like customer is in EU. Then we've got this expression. So this is where we're setting up the rules, the logic, uh, and we hit add. And what you do here is you're basically picking uh, the question that we had set up earlier. So we've got that company region question. And then we're going to say it should show up if uh, the customer is in Europe. So I pick Europe and then hit OK. Hit OK again. And what we get is this tag around the cause. And that tag essentially means if the statement is true, the text is shown. Otherwise, it's taken out. And when it gets taken out, you'll get all of the cause references automatically updated. Uh, so a relatively simple concept, but it can create incredibly bespoke documents, especially uh, when you leverage the complexity of the logic uh, that the platform can support. So um, there are obviously other options here, uh, but those two are really where you end up focusing a lot of your attention on when you're marking up your document. And with those two capabilities, you can get really complex document uh, markup. But then once you are done with your markup uh, and once you're happy with it, you can then automatically uh, create a running application from it. So to do that, you import your document into uh, our it's sort of administrative portal where you administer your applications. And I'll just jump over there. Uh, so this is where you would go to import your document. So you can hit this plus button 
and you've got this import a word template option. So what you would do is you'd click the document that we just marked up, you click it there, and then it automatically creates a runnable application. I'm not going to do that now because we only marked up a couple of fields. Uh, so what I've got is one that I prepared earlier, which only has a few more fields in it. It's still an MSA. Uh, it only took, you know, that's kind of an hour's work. So only a few extra fields uh, to mark up and, and finish off, but I'll give that a run so that you can see what happens. So once you've imported, it would get created here. And then when you give it a run, you can see your fields come to life. So I've added a little welcome page and then you can see your fields here. So this would be the same as how we just created the two fields on one form. This is that form showing up just with a few more fields uh, that I've got pre-populated just so that we can run through it quickly. So you can obviously change the design as well. So this is just kind of an out of the box design, um, but you can obviously tailor that as you wish. Uh, but this is what gets automated uh, with your document automatically for you. So just based on what you've done in the template, you can create this. And then at the end, uh, you will have a document get generated uh, for your application. So now we have an application uh, that users can run and it generates their version with their details populated in the document. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, from there, you can actually take it a bit further if you would like. So what you can do is you can add it into a broader workflow. Uh, so again, something that I prepared earlier, uh, if we jump over to this tab, you can see, and if you've seen the other Neoda Artificial Lawyer video, on workflow, this will look familiar, but otherwise essentially what we're looking at is a diagram that represents a workflow between two parties. So this is one party's uh, pool here and a second party's pool here. And if I just zoom in, we can see over here, we've got the master services agreement. So this node essentially represents the application that we just uh, automated, that we've created, the one that I just ran. So this is the node here. And then what we've added in is a whole heap of other parts of the workflow. So we've got, for example, an email. Uh, and then down here, you can see we've got some negotiations. So the document goes out for negotiation with the other party. And then we've also got a node representing our e-signatures. So it goes through an e-signature process as well. And now this might sort of initially seem a little bit daunting to build out all of these other tasks because we've, we've built one, we sort of walked through that, uh, but how do we build all of these other tasks? And what we've found is that these workflow tasks have a lot of common patterns with them. So what we've done is we've provided our customers with pre-built uh, building blocks so that you don't have to build out that functionality yourself. So for example, you can see this uh, card here is called building block negotiation. And what that means is this is actually a pre-built negotiation solution. And all you need to do is once you've added in your master services agreement application into this workflow, you can bring in a building block that performs the negotiation for you. So all you need to do really is bring them in and connect them up and that's it. So lots there. Um, hopefully that gave you a bit of an insight into the end-to-end -end process of how you would create a document automation application or indeed workflow. Fantastic. Thanks, Dom. Really interesting. Uh, good, uh, good walkthrough that really shows how to, how to use this. Um, just a couple of quick questions for people who are watching. Um, how would someone actually get hold of this? I mean, it, it, does this come as part of the main Neotologic package or is this something separate? All of it comes as the as part of the main Neota package. So there's a, you know, a bit of a question about which ones you want to learn first and which use cases you've got that you want to tackle with, but it all uh, comes together. Gotcha. And also in terms of sort of training and learning, I mean, how long would it take someone to get up to speed using this? I mean, I can see a firm looking at this and saying, well, you know, I'm not going to be doing this. We'll, we'll get the associates to do it, you know, as is usual. Uh, how, how long would it take to train up the associates to, to do this? So in terms of the word, the, the word toolbar, we usually run about a half day session on that. And that actually gets to, you know, we get through all of these buttons, what every functionality does in this, if you want to use it. 
a lot of the time, some of these buttons are sort of the 5% when you've got really complex use cases that you might want to use. But even so, it's sort of about a half day workshop to get you up to speed on, on all the buttons. I mean, you sort of saw um, variable and condition and there, there's a little bit to learn there, but not too much. That's kind of, you know, covered off in 10 minutes or so. Brilliant. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thanks, Dom. A uh, real pleasure to have you uh, with Artificial Lawyer for the last four videos. Um, hope to see uh, more of you in the future. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.